There are 50 houses coming down in Kalamazoo. My company's vision is to take these forgotten houses and turn them into family homes. And that came through the show. Welcome to the Rental Property Owner and Real Estate Investor Podcast, brought to you by the Rental Property Owner Association, providing benefits and services to real estate investors and rental property owners for over 48 years. With your host, Ryan Hamrick from Hamrick Investment Group. This episode is sponsored by Green Property Management, managing everything from single family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area. Find out more at greenpropertymgt.com. Hello and welcome to episode 117. I'll bet that every investor who's ever flipped or rehabbed a house has at some point thought to themselves, I should have my own TV show so that people can see how it really works. Well, today, I have the pleasure of talking with two investors from Kalamazoo, Michigan, who have not only succeeded at fixing and flipping, but are now the stars of their own reality TV show, which is now playing on the DIY network and is in discussions to be a series on HGTV. You may remember my guests, Jeremy Cole and Ramon Huerta, who were on the show uh, about a year ago, episode number 65, and they have a property crawl that they do every month in Kalamazoo, Michigan which is kind of a live version of one of those uh, fix and flip type shows where they take people to the actual projects that they're working on. We've talked before, so I'm just gonna get right into the conversation. Uh, we, we finished our uh, podcast, uh, recording our podcast a year ago. And I said to you guys, I said, wow, you guys should do this for real, like be <laughs> on TV, because you, you, you both have a lot of charisma I'm, and you're doing it for real, you're, you're the real deal. and. Jeremy, you said, funny enough, yeah. <laughs> we just recorded a, a pilot for HGTV. Yep. So why don't you take it from there? Tell, um, yes. tell us what happened a year ago and how that all came about. So a buddy of mine, Stanley Steps, showed up, or he actually messaged me and said, hey, Jeremy, we've got to get you off of just doing before and after pictures on Facebook. Let me just show up with a, a camera. I'll record some things. I'll put it together and we'll make it look real cool. So we did that for a few months. He put six or seven episodes together on his network and he tagged a bunch of different um, uh, production companies. Production company out of Detroit said, hey, we've got a contact at HGTV that may be interested in this. Let's shoot what's called a sizzle reel. So it's just me talking excited with my hands and my team, Ramon was there. Um, We submitted that. And at this point there are thousands of submissions going into HGTV annually. So we're just one of a thousand. Um, uh, we get past that first initial meeting. They say, wow, we like their, we like their, you know, their charisma, their excitement, their energy. Uh, so we got to the next level, which they funded another sizzle reel, which was about five minutes. They sent in a camera team. They sent in an audio guy. It was a lot more professional than what Stan and I had originally started doing. <laughs> so, uh, they shot that, they paid for it, they funded that. Um, and then it went to what's called a green light meeting. At this point, this is where the network says, we like it enough to send it to pilot. So, uh, you know, thousands of submissions get whittled down to a dozen. We were one of the dozen. So uh, we got the thumbs up. We got the green light meeting. And the production, co- or I'm sorry, HUTV funded a uh, $200,000 production of our pilot. Not the rehab, not the purchase price. <laughs> this is for the camera team, the production, the producers, things like that. Uh, I still had to. The post-production, <laughs> yeah, the yeah music, post-production, the graphics, all exactly. Those things. Yeah. So I didn't get any. I didn't get much of that. Um, but they did send their their team out. Uh, they filmed the entire pilot. I bought a, a, a literally a nasty house. Uh, it was a hoarder's house. You couldn't even walk through this thing and see things, you know. Um, so start to finish from after we cleaned it out to, you know, this house being just uh, uh, the best on the block. It was the worst in the entire neighborhood. Finished out being the best on the block. They captured that entire uh, rehab and it just aired on February 10th at 8 p.m. on the DIY network. Um, and so that's kind of where we... And the show is called From Gritty to Pretty. Yeah, the show is called Gritty to Pretty. <laughs> so, and and uh, yeah, I watched I watched the episode. Okay. Because uh, I knew we were going to be talking today. And by the way, we're talking at the RPOA's annual conference. Yes. So you guys showed up. Thanks for coming. I mean, this is this is the excitement and the type of type of quality people you have at the at the RPOA's annual conference. So, That's right. So thanks for coming up from Kalamazoo. But anyway, I watched the episode again last night, and you really did buy a, just a just. I mean, I would have walked into this house and then torched it 
<laughs> this was the yeah. ugliest house, and and disgusting in so many yeah. ways. Uh, Ramon, why don't you're you're, you're you kind of come in from the realtor's perspective? Right? Yes. You're you're the one who's going to help sell the house yes. when it's all said and done. What did you think when you saw the house that Jeremy? You're like this is your big shot at stardom. What did you think when you saw this house that Jeremy had chosen? for, for your, your pilot episode? Well, I, I've known Jeremy for several years, so I, I know what he likes to buy. I know what excites him. So it was right in his realm. Um, I was concerned because now he's going to be on TV. <laughs> so I would have hoped it would have been just a little bit better, you know, but it wasn't. And even um, what you saw on, on the show um, doesn't even show everything, how bad it really was. I mean, they had to clean it out. Um, so I remember just walking in and we walked into some really bad houses um but that bathroom was by far i didn't want to walk in there i, I mean just, i just the I, shot we, I saw maybe yes. go wash my hands after watching it on TV. no and i'm glad that he was the one that walked in there because i was like i, I that, that's the first thing that came out of my mouth i didn't realize we were taping or anything i'm like i'm not walking in there <laughs> like they want to edit this or cut or whatever <laughs> change the camera view it, it was just like it was just very very bad mm -hmm. um and the rest of the house was just dated but i mean that's what he likes that's what motivates him um i I knew it was going to be a good product. Um, my only concern was the timeline. When he told me, um, I, I had less of the pressure because I knew it was going to be a good product. I knew it was going to show well. Um, I knew that the pressure was on him to get it done in the time, time frame that they wanted. So I was, I was a little bit relieved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and and, and the, I was impressed by the episode because it was, it was put together in a way that, that seemed real. Yep. Uh, it starts with the two of you walking through the home, which... And we've seen these shows many times, mm -hmm. uh, but I guess because I talked to you guys and, and I knew that this was you know, a Kalamazoo, this was a real Kalamazoo house. This is a real deal. This is not just, you're not just actors playing right. this. Yep. Um, because I know some of these shows, I, you know, mm -hmm. some of them, you, you're, you're seeing some actors. Yeah. You guys are the real deal. <laughs> um, and I've seen these types of houses that are just disgusting and I've walked out of them and said, There's, I, don't, I don't even want to ever think about that house again. Yep. Um, but... Uh, Jeremy, how do you you do this all the time? How do you walk through a house like that and and a just figure out what you would even pay for it? B determine how much it's going to cost to fix it up because um, and, and why don't you start by kind of saying what you said on the show, which is I bought this house for this much. I'm going to put this much into it. I'm going to sell it for this much. Take us through that process. Yeah. So the weird thing about me is I can walk into an ugly house, a nasty house, I like to call them, and I can see the finished product. So I'll literally, I'll walk into the kitchen and I'll say, okay, you know what, this wall's gotta be moved here or we're gonna have a bank of cabinets here. We'll have a, you know, a Lazy Susan on the base here. Maybe we'll put an island here. So while I'm doing that, I'm calculating, okay, my uh, you know, 36 inch sink base is gonna cost me $175 at Lowe's. Uh, this uh, 36 inch wall cabinet is gonna cost me 98 bucks. Uh, the, this drawer bank is going to cost me two eleven. I've got all these numbers in my head, so I'm just calculating that. Okay, I'm going to put on Duroc on the on the floor, and then I'm going to put my ground or uh, my base, and then I'm going to put the tile. My tile is a dollar twelve a square uh, a square foot. I'm doing all these calculations rather quickly because I like to give an offer to someone before I leave that house. I don't want them to have enough time to call someone else or. Um, you know, entertain any other offer. So I'm literally, I'm walking to the living room. Okay, this is this square footage. I've got a little laser shooter that I can just put on the wall. Okay, this is 13 feet. I'll put it on the other wall by 20 feet. Okay, so this is the square footage of this living room. Uh, this is what my carpet's gonna cost me. Uh, if I'm saving hardwoods, this is what the refinish cost is gonna cost me. I'm running numbers as I'm walking through this property. So you're telling this all in your head? It's all in my head, yeah. You and don't so have that's, an Excel spreadsheet that you bring No, so that's the, <laughs> the, the, I was blessed with this memory that I can just remember quite a few things. And I like to, I look at the macro. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of investors want to write everything down and just get the micro numbers. I'm looking at it from, you know, 10,000 square feet. So I'm thinking, OK, the kitchen is going to cost me based on my numbers real quick. It's going to cost me uh, $9,000 in materials. Living room is going to cost me $1,500 in trim, new windows and paint. Uh, bathroom, cut it all the way down, redo it. It's going to cost me three grand. And so then I take, OK, nine, three, twelve. Um, OK, so you want. X amount for the house. How about we drop that price four thousand dollars? You know, uh, I'll add in my you know, material cost, and we'll get the job done in six weeks. So I look at you know the the finished product first, okay, or the finished price. I'm sorry. So I can sell the house for one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. My material costs and labor costs are going to be thirty five thousand dollars. 
So I like I like huge profits. <laughs> so I like instant equity. So I need to make at least thirty grand on the property, um, and so I'll just work backwards from there. If I can make thirty grand on it, you know, minus one hundred or one hundred fifty minus thirty, I've got one hundred twenty thousand dollars of room there. As long as I pay less than you know, one hundred twenty, it's a win for me. Uh, but usually I pay like twenty thousand or less. <laughs> so uh, there's huge profits in the ones that no one else wants to touch, and my competition is very limited. Most people are going to walk into the houses that I buy and just walk right back out. They're going to look at that bathroom, and, and again, the the, ba- the bathroom that you'll that you see on the pilot is the cleaned <laughs> version of that bathroom. Oh, you uh, mean it was more disgusting? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, you the, guys shot the, the toilet was full. The uh, the sink was full. So why didn't you leave it that way? Like so. so it was let's a talk whole... about the Hollywood magic here. Why why <laughs> yeah. did why did you feel the need to clean that bathroom up so that it looked as disgusting as it did? I didn't. <laughs> the network did. <laughs> so I, I bought that house and I said. Uh, cause we, okay. So we switched houses. That wasn't going to be the pilot house. I bought a 1600 square foot, two story, massive house that had full brick siding. Uh, you know, the foundation, not the foundation, but the beam was falling in. I mean, there was just so many problems. The network saw it and said, uh, this is not going to get done in six weeks. This may take a little more time. Cause that's all we get. Six oh, weeks. So they were, they, they're thinking about the timeline. Yes. How long is it going to take? Yes. To turn this? And okay. so, you know, I'm thinking, well, it may take us eight weeks, but they're like, well, we've got post-production. We've got, you know, all this other stuff we've got to do. So we need you to get done in six weeks. So uh, I bought that other house and I said, hey, I've got a hoarder house. You guys want to take a look at that one? It's a ranch. It could be nice and quick. Six weeks, not a problem. So we get over there, we walk in and I'm like, hey guys, check this out. It's a it's a hoarder's house. They said, wow, we like the neighborhood. We love the, the you know, the, what you're going to do with it, the final product. But hoarder is another show, you know, so clean the hoarderness out and then we'll get going. So we left some blinds. We left, you know, things in that but you couldn't walk through that house there was a uh, actually there was a failing beam in that house but i couldn't see it it was behind a, a, a drop ceiling but i didn't think to look up there because i was trying to balance and not fall into you know a bucket of water that's been there for three years you know and get it all over me so i'm, I'm trying to balance and it, it it was the best of that situation uh but they didn't want the hoarder look they said that's a different show uh they wanted it to be disgusting, yes. just not. Uh, there's there's a line they didn't want yeah. to cross. Yeah, yep. and that's yeah. Those are all consider. It's like those are not your considerations, right? But it's interesting when they're making a TV show. Yep. Uh, you know, they they have those considerations. Like what what's the segment? What's the what are we going after here? Yeah. And then also the timeline. You know, I mean, you guys did a lot of work in six weeks. Yeah. But yeah, then they have the post production. You know, the editors, the sound mm-hmm. composers, the graphic people who add the graphics and everything. Which you know they know how much time that takes. And it's just like built, it's just like working on a house. Yep. You're know, putting together a TV show. Yeah. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about Green Property Management. Not only do they manage everything from single-family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area, they also manage my entire portfolio. So I can tell you from personal experience that their unique flat fee management style is worth a closer look. If you feel that your property isn't operating to its fullest potential, then Green Property Management can help you take a holistic approach that. That will save you money, eliminate your headaches, and increase your net income. And if you're a property manager interested in applying Green Property Management's model, give them a call at 1-866-95-GREEN or visit them on the web at greenpropertymgt.com. Ramon, where were you during all of this uh, in the, the finding of the houses and, and helping to figure out uh, w- which house to actually use and, and, yeah. and maybe op- uh, acquiring those houses. <clears throat> right. um, Jeremy does a great job to you know find his properties. I usually, um, once in a while, I'll bring him something um, that he'll buy, but he usually does his own searches. He's got his own system down packed that just works for him um, where he doesn't have much competition and he gets the properties that he wants. Um, I come in kind of at the after effect to see where make sure that the pricing is you know within reason we always go below you know because we just want it sold right away we're not worried about you know a couple thousand dollars just to be there we just want somebody to walk in love it write an offer and we'll close as soon as possible um so that transition um works very well we just you know we've been doing it for a while now and it's just he has a strong i have mine and we just kind of let each other do what each other does and it just comes together um i know when he had asked me about you know the show and things um mike i remember talking to him having my concerns like well are they gonna have us 
you know, do this. I, I don't know if I'm comfortable. I'm like, I, you know, I'm, he's even in property crawl. He's the one that talks most of the time. I'm kind of in the, you know, on the back and I'm, I'm comfortable there. You know, I'm like, I let him do his thing. And I, you know, I say what I have to say when I need to. And then I just take a step back and, you know, let him step up to the podium again. So, you know, I'm comfortable there. Um, so I was a little bit concerned when, you know, I brought that up about, you know, obviously as a exciting be like yeah i want to be on tv why why wouldn't i um but is it going to be fake and you know you're going to have me say something that i really don't believe or i'm comfortable with or exaggerate on like oh this is a you know five hundred thousand dollar house that we're going to sell and you know one day um but once we got there and we started shooting it um i can't remember the guy's name but he we had some runs and we were kind of i think just a little bit nervous or you know I'm, I'm thinking about what i'm gonna say and he just pulled us to the side and said you know just just be you act like you know how you would act if nobody else was here and i think once for me once i heard that i was like you know what i can be i'm me all the time so i'm just gonna do that and that's when it just started flowing and you know i don't I think it was short takes it wasn't that many once we got in there and um just said what we had to say looked at it i just i gave him my opinion he told me what he was gonna do i said okay sounds sounds good and it just it just worked out so it was it was good after it i was done i was like you know this is this is not that bad <laughs> I, was like, I can really do this one of the things i remember ramona and i when we first the very first day we started filming <clears throat> uh we were stiff you know, because it was like, well, you got a bunch of cameras there. We're all mic'd up. You got two dozen people just staring at us, and we're supposed to, you know, just be fluid. Well, the good thing is the um, uh, Stephen Lerner, who's uh, number two at HGTV, he saw us, you know, just being kind of stiff and robotic in our movements, and he said, guys, stop, stop, stop. Uh, is this how you guys talk, you know, without any cameras? Is this how you guys normally interact? And we're like, no. You know, he said, be you. You know, don't, and he, you know, he cursed a little bit. And he, <laughs> you know, he said, be real, man. Just be you guys. Just act like no one else is here and just have the conversation. Because I said, well, you know, the driveway may cost me $5,000. I don't know if I'm going to, he's like, are you going to replace that driveway? I said, no. He said, well, don't talk about it, you know. <laughs> if you're not even going to touch it, just don't talk about it. Be real. Be you guys. Be genuine. And so after he said that, it was literally just a conversation. Again, Ramon and I were just having it. was like the cameras weren't there. We just started talking, and, and it was just us. So it, I thought the show came off genuine. You know, it, that's how I act with my guys. My guys are dancing around. We've got Ben, who just loves to you know, mess around with bugs. I've got the young gun Brandon in there. Uh, you know, our team is just, it's, it's so weird, but it works. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's, it's awesome. And to hear, like, Steven just say, guys, just be you. Just be real. That was relaxing. That was uh, that was amazing. Yeah, because you felt like you needed to be a TV personality. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. You start thinking about the shows that you have watched <laughs> and what do they do and how do they present this? <laughs> yep. and, you know, and then it just yeah, you just get cluttered in your brain of overthinking things. Yep. Yeah. Well, you got you guys have a nice dynamic and you balance each other well because you, Jeremy, you have the energy and the you know the the uh, you're 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 more the focus because you're the one who's there during all the, the the work that's going on but then you come in Ramon and and the way they structured it they, they were very clever in the way they structured it because you're there in the beginning and the middle and the end and you're the one who's kind of like the goalpost you're like this this is where we're this is where we can go then you come in and it's like how's it going and then you come in at the end and you're like Good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, and, and uh, yeah, I just I, I I I thought that the two of you worked off each other very well. Um, Ramon, you talk about like just are, are you going to have to be are you going to have to make up things? You know, is it was there any? Did you feel like at some any points you were pushed into the land of make believe, like maybe coming up with some problems where problems didn't exist, or did did it seem pretty natural the way you guys put the show together? Um, I didn't think so. Um, any rehab, there's always problems. I don't think you need to make up anything when it comes to um, rehabbing properties. There's so, something that always comes up. Uh, might not be major, might be small, but it, there's always a delay um, in, in a part or something. Um, to me, the, the biggest thing that was a challenge was sometimes when they want you to, um, for whatever reason, either lighting or something happened with the equipment they want you to redo that shot that they call and they're like they tell you say the same thing that you just said i don't know what i just said <laughs> that was to me that was it it was like uh, what did i say i can't remember now like, you know so those were the Reset. only yeah. uncomfortable yeah. things um every everything else they just said just just be you 
say what you have to say if that's how you feel and that's what you think if that's what you would tell them um, as your friend then then say it um, don't try to think of anything outrageous or anything like that just to make it uh, more suspenseful or something so that's that's what I enjoyed the most is they, they honestly let us be us and and, um, and I think that's what a lot of people that I've heard that seen the show that that they like because they know us and said you know that's really you yeah mm -hmm. that's really you that's that's his smile all the time you know yeah. so it's, it's just great yeah uh, Jeremy what was your experience with your team because you you probably spent a lot more time with the cameras and the, yep. the producers and uh, making it happen so how did that go for you so I'm there every single day I'm actually and that's what was different about our show is I'm not just no, I'm not going to say just. I'm not the investor that buys the house and then hires everything out. I'm the investor builder. I'm the licensed builder that goes in and, you know, the designs. We did have an architect come in and kind of say, well, you should try this or do that. Um, but our problems in that property were real. Like the, the, the failing beam. I didn't see that when I bought that house. You know, it was, again, under a drop ceiling. And I couldn't actually get to it to see it. So the part that they didn't capture was when I originally discovered it. You know, we started pulling the ceiling down and cleaning stuff out. And I look up and I'm like, wait a minute, guys. There's no beam here holding this side of the house up. Like, hold on, grab some two by fours, get this secured. Like, if you saw that, if you caught that, that would have been even more suspenseful. Uh, the the um, the septic system, we knew we had to do something with, uh, just not on the level of replacing the entire line to the city sewer. So they, they never connected it. They paid the assessment, which the township told me, uh, but they never hooked up to the city sewer. So it was the only house in the entire neighborhood that was still on a septic system, which was already full. So uh, there was no way to, to clean it out. The, the township allows you to one cleaning, but uh, for my future buyer, I didn't want them to have to go through the expense to, to pay for it to you know, get replaced. So those were our two major problems. The failing beam, which we had to bring vice engineering in on, uh, and then the, uh, the the septic, the failing septic system, which we had to hook to city sewer. Both real problems. And in the houses that I buy, there's never a shortage of problems. There's always something that goes wrong. Um, but we always find a way to, to power through. Now you were, you're, project from start to finish when you once you brought in your crew it was what a five to six week six weeks six week uh, rehab and uh, how much time were, were the cameras actually there yeah so without the cameras we would have finished in four weeks um again like ramon said there were there were multiple takes so we'd be let's say cutting two by fours or not two by fours we'd be cutting deck boards for the deck uh, and they say, well, let's hook a GoPro up to the back of your uh, skill saw so we can get that shot. And it's like, okay, cool. You guys stop doing that so we can get this shot. Or we'd be doing the front yard interviews and, you know, any kind of a sound, just like we're recording here, any other sound is going to get picked up. An airplane, 30,000 feet in the air. They're like, all right, guys, stop, pause. Got to let that plane go by. You know, mm -hmm. uh, one of the neighbor's dogs barking. Wait, got to let that dog stop barking. You know, they wanted it because the audio was was. I, I, don't, I don't the auto guy was amazing he but he was able to pick up every little sound and nuance so we had to make sure uh that things were perfectly quiet when they needed to be so when i'm doing the front yard interview nobody could be inside hammering the plumber couldn't be in there you know cutting pipes out or everything had to stop while we were doing that interview and the interview lasted two hours three hours sometimes so there's a half a day because we don't get going until 10 o'clock i think i mentioned that back on episode 63 <laughs> i'm not a morning guy so you know we blow half a day um, on an interview, which was cool, but it did add some time to the uh, to the rehab. So six weeks on, on a ranch is, is easy um, for us. Uh, so, but again, we would have been finished in probably four weeks had we not had the uh, the cameras there. And, and were the cameras there the whole time, or did they just come in every, you know once a week or something? Yeah. So that was again. This is um, Arcadius Network is, are the producers, and uh, this was their first uh, cable show. So this is their first time on cable. So they were there every single day, which they found out in the end was too much filming because they had to go through six weeks worth of eight hours a day, you know, where, where the footage was so down to about 22 and a half minutes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they said in the future, we're only going to show up on these few days and we'll capture what you guys are doing here. Uh, but they literally they were there from 10 o'clock till five o'clock. Uh, and then on the production side, they've got a whole nother like they can't work over, I think, 10 or 12 hours in a day. Um, so they'd have 
uh, before we started at 10 o'clock, they'd have to meet with the entire team at a separate location. And then they'd meet at the house at 10 o'clock when we're getting ready to go. And then we leave at five o'clock and they're still putting tables up, chairs up and, you know, wrapping up. But they've got, you know, there's terminology called strike. Like we're going to strike this location uh, because we've got to be out in the next half an hour. Everybody's got to be done, um, I guess, by their laws or codes or whatnot. But that's just a little bit of a, a difference for my world because I'm like, hey, you guys want some overtime? Then let's just keep going. <laughs> you know, want to keep working? Grab your hammer. Let's go. So, so a um, uh, couple of questions about that. Like, how many people did they have on their crew? So you've, you've got your team, and yep. there were probably looked like five or six guys yep. plus yourself. How many people were on the actual camera crew and, and the, the shooting crew? So on what they call big shoot days, uh, there were I want to say a dozen people. So they've got an audio guy, they've got uh, a sound guy. Um, so uh, the camera guy was Nathan, awesome guy. Audio guy, Mike, awesome guy. We've got uh, the showrunner, uh, who actually is there every single day with us. They've got uh, two executive producers, they've got an associate producer, they've got... Um, the person that I don't know what that's called. The clapper. The clapper. That is a that is like a full paid position. That uh, you know she was there to do the clap. I didn't know that that was a, a position. You know, uh, so they have that person. Then they've got uh, like these white screens that block the sun or direct the light. That was a uh, a position. Um, uh, but Tom Tom was their production coordinator. So Tom made sure we had waters, we had snacks, we had band-aids, hard hats, or not we, but the production team had all this stuff. He was the he was the safety guy. He was the guy you, hey, I need this done. He'd run and do it, you know, <laughs> go grab donuts or lunch or band-aids or whatever. So they had a good dozen people on the big shoot days. And um, when it wasn't a big shoot days, they had maybe a half a dozen people. Now they, they have craft service, they feed Jenny. Any so lunch? we got lunch catered every day, which my team got used to. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not in the budget. <laughs> you know, when this thing gets picked up for serious. Yeah. Yeah, like, cameras uh, cameras are gone. The They're, like, <laughs> They're like, where's the lunch? I'm like, well, we'll do it for a week and then, you know, phase this out. <laughs> you got to bring your own lunch again. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, they, they brought us lunch every single day. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was fun. It's fun. I'd encourage everyone to watch it. First of all, tell us how... People yeah, so it. the show is called Gritty to Pretty. Um, I don't think it's airing on online streaming just yet, but I'll have that information soon. And I'll can get can you watch it on demand? You possibly. Might, possibly. So Gritty to Pretty, it's on the DIY network. Yes, yes. And um, it, what, is there a name for the episode or episode number? Yeah, yeah Welcome to the Jungle. To the jungle. Welcome to the yeah. Jungle. Okay. It's called. <laughs> oh, we didn't even touch on the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. Why, okay. why do they say, why is it called Welcome to the Jungle? Yep. Um, but uh, uh, do, how do you feel after watching the yeah. final so, uh, product? I was, I was originally concerned that they'd make me out to be a vulture. That's not what I am. You know, I buy the ones that the county and the government wants to demolish. These houses, no one else wants to touch. And in Kalamazoo, there are certain neighborhoods that builders won't go in and plop a $100,000 brand new house in. And so my idea, don't demolish it. I'll come in, I'll spend my $30,000 to rehab it. And then, you know, instead of you demolishing 50 houses, there's 50 more families that have housing in our city. And so I wanted to make sure that they didn't make me out to be a vulture and they didn't you know and it came across as hey that's really the guy that wants to save those houses that everybody wants to take down they they were they were able to articulate that point where i said you know there are 50 houses coming down in kalamazoo alone you know that's a mainstay that uh, my company's vision is to take these forgotten houses and turn them into family homes and that came through the show you got to see some of these houses that most people would walk right out of you got to see that become the best on the block, literally, and the, the, the family that bought it loves it. Um, so I, 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 when, I, when I saw the series or when I saw the show, I was, I was glad that they were able to capture that. The one thing I didn't like is it was only a half an hour. You know, there was so much more fun, you know, and excitement that happened during that six weeks that, you know, I look back, and I'm like, oh, man, you didn't put that in. Oh, you didn't put that in. But what they did use was amazing, and like you said, it was seamless. It was great. What they did use, I really liked. Um, so I'm pulling and I'm hoping that we get an hour show so you guys can actually see a little more of the inner workings of, you know, the beam and how we put it up and how we decided on that sizing or why I picked the tile floor that I picked and the island size versus this. Because 
you know, there are a lot of different things that they didn't capture, but it will be important if you're, if you're in a position where you say, you know what, I want to flip houses. How do I do that? And if you can't make it to a property crawl, you'll be able to watch this show where the actual guy is really doing the work. And I can walk you through, you know, how it's done in an exciting and entertaining way. Yeah. Uh, Ramon, why, why did they title the episode Welcome to the Jungle? Because uh, walking through the property, when he was showing it to me, and we, I, it, I saw it right away. But I, I was, you know, I was like, I'm thinking about the camera. Um, but once he walked me to the back, I mean, they were literally just overgrown weeds that were probably higher than me. Probably higher and, than the house, almost <laughs> from the looks of it. And I know, I know. That at one point, I was thinking, I know they're going to want us to go back out there. <laughs> And I don't want to be the one to say no. I don't want to be that guy, but I really don't want to walk out there. So hopefully they can just catch us from the window or, you know, figure something else, bring the drone out there to catch that. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, it was, it literally was a jungle back there. And I knew um, that was going to be uh, an important key to that house is a family would have to come in, see that and see their home, see if they have children playing out there or if they have their pets. I mean, that was gonna be in a space that needed to be um, utilized in the house. And uh, I know when he talked about the slider and the deck, I said, um, you know, I he hardly does any landscaping from his previous projects. So I was like, you know, you're gonna have to do something back here. We just can't cut it. <laughs> we can't just trim it down. Um, you're gonna have to do something out here. But um, he knew, he saw it too. He's got great vision. Uh, and I knew it was, gonna, it was gonna turn out great. Yeah, so how, what was the math in your head like when you walked into that backyard and you saw all the trees and weeds and everything that had to come out. Yeah, and poison ivy. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, they didn't mention that. Yeah, no, no, no. They didn't tell anything about that. There's poison ivy all throughout that backyard. So we had to knock all that down. Um, and, you know, cutting it with a lawnmower just wasn't going to happen. Uh, weed whackers weren't going to work. The vines were too thick. It was like, we got to get a machine in this backyard and just scrape the top four inches off the entire thing. We found steps that were buried that read in, or led into the back of the garage. Um, so basically I just took, okay, we got four inches to pull and replace, uh, over this, you know, surface area called, uh, my excavator at Bailey's and just said, how much is it if you drop this and load it in the backyard and, you know, spread it for me, got a number and we did it. So, and then we seeded it and you kind of see Fido back there with the straw dancing and stuff, you know, cause that's just, that's who we are. That's what we do. We like to have a good time. If it's not, ha if we're not having fun, it's just not worth doing. So, uh, we, you know, that's us. We had fun doing that whole backyard, although we were kind of dancing in Poison Ivy a little bit, <laughs> pulling vines from the house. I mean, it was it finished out amazing, uh, but it was it was quite a project for someone that doesn't do landscaping often. I like to I can fix the house fixing, uh, you know, landscaping and cars really isn't my thing. Yeah. So how long did it take for your, your team to get used to the cameras? I mean, do you, do you feel that you played it up for the cameras a lot or did you just eventually get into the rhythm that you're usually in with, when the cameras aren't So the there? first couple of weeks, maybe not even the first, maybe the first week and a half, because again, they were there every single day. So, you know, the first week, it's like, you know, the first couple of days, oh, this is weird. You got to mic up my shirt and all this other stuff. But by that Thursday, you know, the production team was amazing. So we're goofing around, talking with those guys. By week two, we're like, Dude, let's let's do it. Monday's coming around. Let's get back at it. Uh, and so after the second week, it was just it was just fluid. I mean, they just captured what we what we did. Um, occasionally, we did do something you know cool, and then they say, "Hey, do that again." You know, it's like, what, what did we do? You know, <laughs> but they didn't put many of those moments into the show. So I think what they did capture was genuine. You know, maybe not the time I said, "Hey Ben, let me show you what this beam's doing." You know. When that first, when I, when that was discovered, I said, "Ben, grab some two by fours, cut them at you know eighty five <laughs> inches. Let's get it under here." So that yeah, was just you, a little yeah. Different. You seemed a little uh, calm. When yeah. You're like, oh, there's no support under <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, at that the point, we there. we had already had a, a two by four under there, so I was comfortable standing <laughs> under there and saying, "Look at this." You know, it was a little more scattered when I first noticed it. Uh huh. Yeah, that would be that would be scary. Yeah. Um, what, what are, what, you know, as we wrap it up here, what, what are just some of your takeaways? Ramon, let's, let's start with you. I mean, you got, you got to see yourself on TV, and that's got to be kind of fun and exciting. I mean, what, what's your takeaway after the whole experience? Um, it was great. Um, when I finally, I was, I was out of the country. I was in um, Ireland when the show aired, so I was excited to get back and to see the show. Um, but 
once I saw it, it was it was great. Uh, like Jeremy said, they caught all those right moments. It was genuine. Um, I was reading all the comments on Facebook. Everybody who was uh, the whole city of Kalamazoo showing us support um, was was amazing. I really really appreciated that. Uh, it was great to see. Um, it was great to highlight uh, property crawl too. So some of the people that come and see us uh, once a month, it's you know this is this is what we do, and uh, we want everybody to succeed and uh, take something away from it and um, I, I believe the the show caught caught all that yeah and the property crawl you do that every month in, in Kalamazoo and you have a Facebook page for people yes. who, are, who are able to attend and want to know when it's mm -hmm. gonna happen you, it's property crawl and that's with a K K R A W L correct right? uh, yeah so type in property crawl on Facebook and you can find out when it's gonna happen but uh, if you want to it's like being, what, instead of watching the show on TV, go participate in it live is what exactly. you're doing. Exactly. Um, uh, Jeremy, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to think what questions people, like what questions do I have when I watch those those shows? You know, and I wonder, it's like, I mean, you're, you're giving them a lot. Yeah. So How are they giving back to you? They get to, well, they want to make certain decisions. So like the exterior of the house, my landscape budget on most of them is cutting the grass and that's it. And so they said, well, you got to dress the front up a little bit. Can you build some planter boxes? Can you put a retaining wall in or can you do this? And uh, they want everything to look, you know, uniform on the front. So instead of, you know, me, I would have put a nice white steel door on the front with a, a matching steel door on the garage door. So they'll say, uh, do you mind if we purchase a wood look door and, uh, you know, a fiberglass front door and we'll pay for it? So I'll say yes. Uh, do you mind if we do... Um, you know, a picture window here instead of uh, two side-by-side -side windows or, you know, anything that they want to upgrade. So if I say I'm going to put white ceiling fans in, but they say, no, we want brush, uh, you know, brush nickel in here. Do you mind if we pay for the upgrade? Sure. So they've got a certain amount of budget in there to say over and above what you're currently doing, we're willing to, you know, compensate for that. And then there's a, what's called the talent fee. So every property I get a small, um, I get a small amount, three grand, um, uh, per episode. So if we go to season, uh, there'll be 13 flips. So you kind of you do the math there. Um, and what I'm really what I'm really hoping for is that uh, some local companies are willing to come in and say, hey, we'll help sponsor some of this so that we can get a lot of local attention around the show. It's a national show, but there's a lot of local companies that have a little hand in it. And so we we kind of we kind of showcase that at our watch party where I invited everybody that every company that had a little hand in it, whether it be the you know, Lowe's that provided the cabinets or uh, the cleaning company that did the final cleaning of all the drywall dust or, you know, our stager came in, our electrician, plumber, HVAC, uh, anyone that had a hand in it, we'd want to showcase like, hey, guys, these are the people we work with. Um, so use them. You know, they're all local. Their families live here. Their families work here. Their families play here. Um, so that's kind of the that's kind of the rundown of the breakdown. The the numbers I think we said 150. I had that offer the very first day that we listed it. We got a, a full price offer, but I went back and I said, well, wait a minute. I think we can get a little more. And I never do that, but I did this time. So I ended up getting less. I, we sold it for 136, um, but the purchase price 24,000, and we invested 31,000 into it. Um, uh, those were the those were the numbers on that one. Okay. Yeah. So you still made a pretty good profit off yeah. of it, but you you got a little greedy there. It sounds yeah, like because like, on the show you say, "Oh, we got an offer at one fifty two. Yeah. But then you pushed a little higher. I did. Said, I did. Uh, <laughs> well, so the whole like you know it gets to your head just a little bit for that half a second where I said, "Oh, we can get a little more. Let's do that." And it was like, "Wait a minute." I so we went back with a counter offer, and they said, "Well, no, we'll pass." And then, you know, so the house sat on the market for a couple of weeks and I'm like, oh, gosh, what did I do? <laughs> you know, and then we uh, we dropped the price and ended up getting, you know, I think we dropped it to 130 and, and the lady came in and, and offered 136. Um, but, yeah, again, I, I never go right at what the market value is. I like to go below the market value. I want somebody to see this with a comp down the road and say, wow, your house is nicer and it's less expensive. Why wouldn't I buy yours? I don't want to mess around with the trying to get the top dollar for the property. That's not my intent. It's to get these things sold so I can buy more nasty houses and save as many as I can. So I need to get those funds back out uh, because we don't do any debt financing. So I need to get the money out so I can do more. Ramon, what was your advice on the price? I was shocked. Uh, but it was a great product. I mean, the, the house was was wonderful. He did a lot of extra things. Um, so it was one of those where I, I can see it, but 
I didn't know what the strategy was behind it because it was just one of those quick like, nope, let's go back to this. And it's like, okay. Um, and then when it didn't play out, play out, it was like, okay, so we something happened. We dropped the ball somewhere. We shouldn't be, you know, two weeks in and not have some somebody else coming through here. Um, and then we just had a little bit of different strategy. Uh, we ended up doing an open house and we actually ended up with six offers that day Same after day. after the open house. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, um, involved the community a little bit more too. Um, got the neighbors to come in and see the finished product, um, which everybody loved. And um, it was they were just happy that, hey, that one eyesore in the block is is gone yeah and now our neighborhood looks great and <laughs> complete yeah. well when you watch the episode it's really striking the the way it looked when you first walked through and then just the transformation it went through uh, you guys obviously staged it yes you know yes. i mean but it looked beautiful it, it looked like a brand new home which essentially it was, it was yeah. so it was a it was a great uh example of just what you do with with your, your rehab and, and your team you know what you guys are able to, to accomplish but um give us the the give our listeners directions on, on what you like how can we help get this to series on hgtv what do we who, whose door do we need to go knock on here? so here's what we're going to do i'm going to put it on my website which is kzu restored dot com k z o o r e s t o r d dot com once i know the next air date we need as many people uh, to, to tune in. They're, the network's interested in eyeballs, how many people are watching. Uh, so we're going to do the whole news circuit again. We'll go to Fox, you know, all the local stations. Uh, but if you can watch it, if we share it on Facebook, we're going to share it via Property Crawl. So if you like the Property Crawl page, um, you'll get it there. Um, and, and just share with your friends, tell your friends, because the more people that watch it and like it and share it, uh, the higher uh, probability that we'll get a show on HGTV. DIY is amazing. Don't let me over you know, understate that, but every, everyone gets HGTV that has a basic cable package and we want as many people to see this as possible. So if you go to the website, once we know that air date, uh, we'll have it right on the home page. If you like our property crawl page, property crawl with a K, uh, you'll get that update. Ramon shares those videos often. Um, and again, that's that's another thing. If you can hashtag gritty to pretty, that's G-R-I-T-T-Y to pretty. Um, the, the, no the number two or uh, the, uh, spelled out? Sorry, T-O uh, pretty. Um, and uh, the pretty, other one is pretty being P-R-E-T-T-Y. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then the other one is uh, hashtag on DIY network. O-N-D-I-Y-N-E-T-W-O-R-K. Um, and so when you do both of those in unison, the network considers what's called trending. So the more people that are hashtagging that um, during the episode, after the episode, or just excited about the episodes, um, it, it raises something in Nielsen, uh, uh, don't know the other rest of that name, but Nielsen standards or whatnot. Um, the, the rating service. The rating they, they service. The, yeah, they let, you, let the uh, stations know how, what how many viewers, how yeah. many eyeballs mm -hmm. do they have on their shows? Yeah. So everyone that tunes in or hashtags um, on social media, if we trend or the, the Nielsen ratings show that people were interested in watching, um, uh, that will help us get to HGTV. I strongly encourage our listeners to watch the show. If they get DIY or they, you know, at least go to Property Crawl or yep. the, the other places you mentioned to, to sign up for, for updates from you. Yes. Um, it, it's a fun show to watch. And I think you'll know what I mean when you watch the show that you guys both have a lot of charisma. You, you, you have a good dynamic together. You balance yeah. each other out nicely. Um, and, and, you're, and it's the real deal. I mean, you're actually watching real work get done on this house yep. and, and you see the transformation and it was really impressive so awesome. so congratulations great job to both of you thank and you. congratulations thank you. And, and good luck appreciate it thanks this episode was sponsored by green property management managing everything from single family homes to apartment complexes in the west michigan area find out more at greenpropertymgt.com you've been listening to the rental property owner and real estate investor podcast brought to you by the rental property owner association you can find out more at rpoaonline.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please go to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review.